mega grace. It takes mega grace to undo mega law. I never heard anyone criticize a mega law movement. Beware mega law, but you know. Do you know what I'm saying? Grace is the divine energy. It's the life force. Paul said, God's grace works in me like energy. He said, I'm not actually working. He said, God's grace works in me. So there's an energy system we can all come into. We call it grace. That's the word we use for it. For it's life force energy. So we're in the age of grace, right? We're framing up a... It's ringing a bit. I don't know why. Is it because I'm moving or... Yeah, it's the monitor, maybe. So grace is a force, a life force. God's grace worked powerfully in me, Paul said. He said, I'm not working. This grace energy is working in me. So great grace is coming on to us, which means great energy. Energy where he couldn't even sleep. He was building tents at night. Preaching in the day, and he was he was over supercharged by life itself, to the point that, you know, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit now. Time travel is the you know one time the Lord took me back to watch Paul, because like when I'm engaging the Lord, I want to see I want to see the family videos, you know, I want to get in on the action, the family photographs, because everyone in the Bible is a t- you know, the writers of the Bible are all time travelers, right? Yeah. Humans are designed to time travel. You put eternity in your heart. Yeah. And most of you time travel when you sleep. Yeah. Because you go into the right brainwave function for yeah. it. Yeah. So, I wanted to see uh, how... There was this scripture in Acts that I loved where it says that... Well, I didn't love it. It was... It, it was I was curious. And it was this, that Paul created such an energy system that all these people rioted against him and a whole city stoned him. So I don't know how many people was in that city, but if you all stoned me, my body would be pretty broken, right? I mean, this shows how much consciousness has changed, by the way, doesn't it? That we wouldn't even think of doing that now. The age of war is over, the age of stoning people is over, the age of these things is over. So it says they all stoned Paul and then they dragged him out of the city. So I don't know how far that was, but you imagine a guy, we've all, they've all stoned Paul. They've smashed him to pieces. Then the, someone grabs him and drags him out of the city, which could have been a distance, who knows. And then it says in Acts, all the Christians stood round him. So I was in that scene and I saw it. I saw the blood trail. He left a lot of blood. He bled out big time. He's standing there, and now I know why it says none of the Christians touched him, because he looked like a mess. It was like, which bit of this should we grab? His head was, was, was crushed, and as I watched, he went, and his face reformed, and his, all of the wounds healed, and it says in Acts, he walked back into the city. <laughs> so when you read it in the book you don't get the full impact of it when you're standing there you do because he walked back on his own blood the guy just bled out and reformed himself because he believed in the power of an incorruptible immortal life he knew no one could kill him until he gave up his spirit. So he's debating with himself, shall I die or shall I stay? Shall I stay or shall I go? He writes about it. Because he keeps regenerating himself and bringing himself back because of the sake of the gospel was motivating him to create another consciousness in creation. For the love which Christ has for me possesses me and leaves me no choice. So he was pursuing a new earth. And that's what made him want to be immortal, was this love that he had for creation, to transform creation. Hey! 
So he understood. He said, this has now come into clear focus. I tell you a mystery, not all of you will die. And his words created an energetic realm for people to enter into, to bypass death. Come on. That throughout history then somebody grabbed that. Yeah. You know, the interesting thing about Enoch, you guys may not know this, but when you read the Jewish literature on Enoch, when he went up into heaven, hundreds of thousands of other people went up with him. Yeah. Originally he had 800,000 followers. And he said, I'm going to be ascended in seven days' time, or something like that. I can't remember the exact dates. And if you don't want to come with me, go back. And over the days, different people decided to stay. But then hundreds of thousands went with Enoch, bypassed death. It records in the, in the literature that they tried to find them all. Those people can come back, by the way. There's a lot more going back and forth. Not everybody that you've been in a meeting with has been human. Every, and I'll tell you, uh, this will shock you guys. Is this okay what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. This will shock you guys. This is an honest truth, but you can ask the Lord. You're powerful, but every single one of you has met Jesus in bodily form. He's just disguised. I believe he showed me that, that at some point we will all see Jesus. A friend of mine met him on a... Her 50th birthday, she was in like a Walmart thing and they had a restaurant and she was walking past her on her 50th birthday and there was a guy there who was cycling, eating salmon and he invited her to sit down and they talked together and it was Jesus. He was wearing, you know, lycra. It was the lycra version of Jesus. Jesus could come in many versions, like you said. Some of us can engage the Lycra version. I don't plan to join the Lycra version of Jesus, but a homeless person or an angel, you know, uh, it says in scripture, see we're not thinking Hebraic, it says some of you have hosted angels unaware. And people, when I grew up in the church, they go, I'd love to host angels unaware. <laughs> No, you're supposed to be aware. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 You know, I've had a few angels try and pretend they're not, try and pretend they're, they're human with me. Yeah. It's like, come on, let's give this up. <laughs> Show me your birth certificates. <laughs> you know angels, when they're walking around like humans and you talk to them, they have cover stories and everything. <laughs> they do, it's like the CIA and FBI, it's legal for them to do it. They make up these ridiculous stories about what they're doing. It's like, yeah, 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 okay. Anyway. So, Father, I pray for great grace because what's being released here is amazing. It's going to take great grace, not great works. There'll be many people who will turn their ministries into immortalistministries.com. Immortalisthealthfood.com Working hard <laughs> But the truth is it has to come from union yeah. Genuine stuff like you guys Genuine, wasn't that an amazing talk today? Yeah. The genuine stuff Which is authentic, authenticity and we have to come from authenticity on it, and that means admitting we don't know a lot. We don't know how to walk in this, but we want to learn. That's how we enter into it. We enter into it through humility, the meek inherit the earth. It's not an empire project. Christians talk about taking over. Jesus never said take over. He said serve, love, release, increase. It's not a takeover project. <laughs> okay, I'm touching a few nerves here. I'm <laughs> all right. If you've got a heart for the future, the universe will conspire around your desire. Mm. 
If it's egoic, it will resist you. Because you resist the proud that gives grace to the... So the immortality's got a frequency on it. Of humility. That you're here to create a better world. You know, someone who's manifested that for me was Elon Musk. Because I saw this incredible interview with Elon Musk where... Hey! Ha! Woo! That he took all this money he made from PayPal and all this and, and put it into SpaceX. You know, when governments normally run space programs, he's decided, I'm going to get us to Mars because we're not going fast enough. And I watched this interview with him. It's an amazing interview. And, and they say to Elon, said, but you could lose everything doing this. All your money and all your wealth because you're trying to do something so different, make these rockets that can land come back down to earth without exploding in the seas. They can just take off and land and all these other things. And he said, but if I took humanity one step further, it was, it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. I've always said, like when I wrote the Beyond Human book, I said to Rachel straight away, I hope someone takes these ideas and writes a better book. Because mm. my aim was to become the Beyond Human author my aim was to create a better world, a better world. See, it can't be about being the best church, it's about being the best world, the best planet, the best solar system, or the best ministry. Who wants to be the best ministry? You do. That's okay, you're a kid, I get it, but at some point, at some point we've got to your consciousness reaches this point where it doesn't matter if you're the best. You want to see, you want to see love, compassion, mercy, grace, glory, joy, the party. But I've always said, like, I don't care if like there's such a wave of immortalists and life that no one ever remembers my podcasts. Who cares about it when it's happening? When life is happening, joy is happening, glory is happening. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All of our websites will pass away. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Is everybody all right? Is it yeah. okay? yeah. Hey, shaka ba 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 ba. So what am I talking about? The reason I've succeeded in ministry and God's given us massive influence is not because we had a marketing budget. We got zero marketing budget. I designed the flyer for Joyfest. I photoshopped Nancy onto it. <laughs> Laura C. I thought pink's a nice colour. I like pink, it's the colour of love. Put it online, we sold 500 tickets in two days. But we were going to do it with the same passion if 30 people were there because it's a frequency, it's an energy, and we're not doing it because we want to be popular. We want a joy fest on this world. We want to blow up religion. We want to see a new consciousness, a new reality. And because of that, we can't lose because we're not competing with anyone. If someone sets up another joy fest in the same town as the same time as us, then it's work. There's two joy fests. <laughs> We don't own the copyright for joy. We're trying to create a revolution. <laughs> Where there's no competition. Competition is old earth thinking. It's collaboration, it's for joy. If someone else is walking in it, manifest it. I know some people, even in the mystic movement, get angry when people teach their teachings. <laughs> but what's the point of having a teaching if someone doesn't learn it and teach it? ministry schools where only you can watch it but your husband or wife can't. <laughs> Do you know what that causes? Division. Division. Which has die written in it. <laughs> Do 
Die vision. When oneness is the future, oneness is reality. You can't have a church split. There's one body in heaven and on earth. That's why the doctrine that you can't talk to saints is such a demonic doctrine because it causes division again. Like there's one body in heaven and on earth, it says in Ephesians. One body. And this doctrine, you can't talk to them. That's witchcraft, they say. I tell you what's witchcraft, is division. And I can tell you now, the saints are coming whether people like it or not, because we pray for them. We said, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. What did we mean? What were we asking for for 2,000 years? You can't be offended when Enoch walks in the room, when 2,000 years of Christians and people have been saying, even people who aren't Christians have been saying, your kingdom come on earth. And then Enoch shows up and all these other people, and you're like, what are you doing here? <laughs> Did you check with the pastor? Is this okay? <laughs> so we shouldn't be surprised that they're coming because we're getting what we asked for, which is a new earth, a new creation. <laughs> You ready for another one? Uh, you're birthing some big babies right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Whoa. You know the na what the name Eve means. If you look at the Hebraic letter, it means the one who is connected to a higher realm to produce a channel of light. To produce wonder. It's got the hay at the end. To birth the wonder, create the wonder, connected, anchored, valved into a higher realm. To birth wonder and disturbance. Hey, to birth the hay. And what's hay? It's what went into Abraham and made him young. Eve's role was to birth hay. It's encoded in her name, in Hebraic. Hey. Hey, ha, hey, hey, ha. So it's not a cr immortality in the new earth, isn't a Christian thing. That's the other form of division. Us and them. Yeah. There's no us and them in the gospel. That's the whole reason Peter saw those shellfish or whatever they were, or pigs, I can't remember what they were, in the net. <laughs> unclean animals. You know what I mean? Yeah. He falls into a trance, sees unclean animals, and he says, eat. And what does he say? Don't call unclean what I have called. <laughs> so why can't they have immortality in life and new technology? new ways of thinking, if they're called clean. Because who decides what they're called? God does. And he's called them clean. Just let that sink in right now. Because that's another churchianity thing. Us and them thinking. There's no immortality in us and them. Because of division again. Because of disunity, of you're cutting off yourself. Because they're a part of you. They're a part of you. Every human being is in him. I'm using scriptures but on everything I'm saying here. I hope you guys know your, 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 this is biblical stuff. <laughs> this is biblical stuff. Because he said in Athens, didn't he? He said, you guys are right in him. We live in him. We in him. And who was he saying that to? He was saying to a group of people who were Jews. And he said, you're already right. But now I'm going to tell you who that is. And I'm going to awaken your consciousness to the wonder of Christ within.
Hey, everybody all right? Are we getting offended right now? Am I losing you? Am I losing you? Is this good medicine? Yes. Get scandalized by it. You know, you've never ever seen a single person that's not saved. Right. I'm using Paul's scriptures. What does Paul say? He says in Timothy, Christ is the saviour of all, but especially those who believe. People don't know their Bibles because we're not reading the Bible. We're listening to a, right, a sermon right. from somebody who went to seminary. Cemetery. <laughs> that hasn't walked in the realm of wonder. They've eaten from the knowledge of good and evil. Which produces... So knowledge of good and evil. Die vision. Us and them produces death because it's the wrong tree. The tree of life is Yeshua, Hamashiach, Adonai, and he is the savior of all, but especially those who believe. Way! Way! Let it sink in because all these Christians are so worried about people. Yep. Thinking that your little effort is going to finish the job. <laughs> Get free from it. Why am I saying this? Because immortality functions through union. Immortality functions through seeing the scandal. That if I am raised up, I will raise all people to myself. Then I might be the all in all. You have to see this. Because there will be no immortality if we still believe a death culture. We have to divorce ourselves from a deaf culture. Yeah, we all died. Are all raised in Christ. It's just some have believed it and transitioned into it. Some haven't unified themselves with that spark of life and received the spirit. There is a receiving of the spirit, but the, the, the oneness has happened. And Nancy's an example of this. You know, Nancy's gone to tribes all over the world. She went to these headhunters. And she was preaching about Yeshua, well they were cannibals I think, and this guy goes crazy because he realises that's the light being he's been walking with every day in the forest. And Jesus said to Nancy, he knows me better than you do. <laughs> we don't own Jesus, Jesus owns us. He owns us. He owns us. Hey! I know I'm, go I'm, I'm going over this point a lot, aren't I? Because I've seen the logic, and I've seen the logic in heaven, that you can't keep believing the constructs of death and decay and punishment and separation. Separation theology is not true. Where can I go from your spirit? So why do Christians say you'll be separated from God? Not sure. It even says in the Bible that the fire of God is in the presence of the Lamb. And what's the fire? <coughs> I will baptize you with fire. My eyes are a fire. My love is a fire. My, my eyes are fire. I want to uh, send fire upon the earth. The Holy Spirit's fire. The angels are fire. And the root word for fire is pure, which is purification. It's transfiguration technology. What does fire do? It takes the original construct and changes it into wave pattern, light, fragrance, and expansion. It's transmutation technology to liberate something from the static structure that it's in. That he will purify you as a laundry soap with fire. There's no bad news in the gospel. There's no bad news in the gospel. Okay, I'm probably preaching this to the wrong audience. So. <laughs> I admit, is this the Bible Belt here? I'm not sure if it is. Or not. <laughs> it's time to loosen the belts. Yeah. 
a bit of a muffin top, shall we? <laughs> Listen, it doesn't matter what we think, does it? It's what he thinks. And if he says, if you who are evil love your children, how much does he love us? That I want none to perish but all. And he loves every person beyond any of your head can get your head around. We have to see this because otherwise, Christians are going to take the concepts of immortality and turn it into empires again. I've got the product. I've got the solution. Christians should do it. No, it's for everyone, everywhere. It's for all creation. We don't own this. We don't own this because the aim isn't to be at the centre of it. The aim is to participate together in the, in the dance of the Trinity throughout space and time as a cosmic thing. Whoa! Ah! Hey! Oh, God! Oh God, I know what I'm saying is true, but it's painful. It's so good. Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us from death. Deliver us from separation. Deliver us from fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Fear has to come to do with punishment. There's no punishment in the gospel. Jesus took the punishment. That's the point of the gospel. Jesus died for us. He took the It says in, in the Bible, it says take, he, he, he says he absorbed the sin and cancelled it. Yeah. He absorbed it and cancelled it. He destroyed it. Wow. Men in the, in the Greek is men katageo thanatos. Thanatos is death. He dismantled and destroyed and annulled death. Another way of saying that is it's broken and beyond repair. It means ineffective or inoperative. Unable to function. It's like a car that you can never repair. You can never get back into it. That's what Jesus did to sin and death. He destroyed it. That's heaven's view. Religion keeps speaking out a view that God doesn't have. God's saying, I destroyed death and I destroyed sin and I freed you from it. What are you going to do now? He's saying, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? How's that working out for you? <laughs> I've seen it. God had, to, God had to deliver me from Christian thinking. <laughs> I was so offended when I saw that, that God was releasing dreams from heaven to people who weren't Christians. Because I was always taught, we should do the movies. We should do them. We would do it so much better than everyone else. <laughs> we should make the music. We should do this because we are Christians. Christian movies. We'll make Christian movies. And they'll be better than non-Christian movies. And we'll make... Christian t-shirts and they'll be better than other people's t-shirts. <laughs> we'll have a Christian restaurants where the burgers are so much more Christian. <laughs> so but then there's all these people catching his dreams. They're catching energy technologies. They're catching how to heal the body through energy work. They're catching understanding how crystals work because it's all crystalline technology. Your bones are made of crystal. It's a crystal sea. Crystals are throughout scripture. They were even on the priests. They were crystal wearers. <laughs> They had crystals that got illuminated by the presence of God to create a frequency. And then there's people going, don't, it's new age. Only read your Bible. I'm going, whoa, this Bible's full of crystals. <laughs> and then there's released an understanding of oils, how they change the frequency of your body, and people are catching it, and then we call it new age. Yeah, no, yeah. it's just somebody that's got an open heart that's actually listening right. to the source of life. Yeah. 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 They're actually going, I'm open. <laughs> Don't talk about frequencies. <laughs> Everything's a frequency. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, is it a good or a bad one? Yeah. 
Just because you're not talking about it doesn't mean there's not a frequency happening. You know, they did an experiment with frankincense. This is by scientists. I watched an hour lecture. They released, you know, they used to release smoke with frankincense in churches. Do you know what that was? That, that was technology. That was a man called Jumbo. They did the same experiments in a modern age and they put 200 different viruses in a room, released them in the room, and then put frankincense smoke in it. Yes. Do you know what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so when they were walking through the churches, they were creating the frequency of life through a technology called frankincense that's not approved by the FDA. <laughs> Churches, it wants to be approved by the FDA. Louder for the people in the back. So they used to have Frankie, who used to clean out that place, and this pastor say, Don't use oils. Or crystal, you know, with crystals. Do you know how a quartz watch works? <laughs> Just, there might be a slight clue. You know when the pastor says, I, oh, there's new, crystals in new age, and what time is it? <laughs> I just looked at my quartz watch. <laughs> Your watch is running off the frequency of the electronic tick of the quartz crystal. Your Apple phone yep. runs off crystal technology. It doesn't work without crystal. Hello, crystal users. <laughs> I don't believe in crystals. It's almost time for lunch. We're going to learn what crystals can do to an atmosphere. Ancient ideas are coming back. This is what I was shown for by Enoch. When I drank Isaiah's wine, it was, you, you, it was that passage of scripture that you rebuilt. It's this one. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. I was hijacked into paradise in 2010, taken off an airplane into light. And it was at a very broken time in my life and I was flying to France to do a youth conference. And I was hijacked into the light. This man steps out, it looks beautiful, amazing. I can't talk, I'm frozen, I'm amazed, I'm astonished. He says, my name's Enoch. And he says, I want to show you something. He went like this and he moved his arm and this vast chamber opened up with, with tables of stone or blocks of stone with the, with the ax of the future. And on every single table was the detailed schematics for each one of us, for what we are going to do the good works he's prepared for us. And I've seen angels looking at them and humans, and I can see these. I'm actually seeing angels and humans in heaven looking at the books, the acts of mankind. And Enoch says, these are the future acts of mankind, and from the beginning I understood them fully. When he said fully, it sounded like a whoa. He said fully, but what I felt was, whoa. Did you, do you know, do you know? After I came out of this, I find it in the Book of Enoch. It's actually in the Book of Enoch. It freaked me out. This place I went to, it says in the Book of Enoch, I understood fully all the acts of mankind. One human being can be that big. One human being, that's not the prophetic, guys. No, I'm not going to go after that again. I've, I've hit that donkey so hard, I'm feeling sorry for it. Let's, let's give it a few carrots. The poor donkey's working hard. Do you realise you're the same composition as Enoch? The difference is his engagement with union. That he walked arm in arm with God. Do you know what that means? He chose every second to be in participation. Not pressing in participation. In everything he was doing, he was participating in this mystical union. And God took him into those realms and gave him such an expanded heart. 
because he had curiosity. God doesn't limit your curiosity. Like people in church, they limit your curiosity, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Don't talk to angels, yeah. they say. Yeah. But you can talk to demons as much as you want. Yeah. <laughs> You can build a deep soul tie with a demon, as far as, you know, as pastors. It's like, everybody's like doing demonic stuff. It's like demon fest. <laughs> we're rebuking this, we're rebuking that. Why don't you have to talk to angels and find out what they think about things? And then they say, but you can't because you've got to die first. So, dark, so death is your, their saviour. Yeah, that's right. Death saves you, death qualifies you. Yeah. And we call this the gospel. Okay. I might just stick to the notes. Stick to the notes. Stick to the notes. I'm going after this because when I start to ascend, it shocked me, but you start to see what opposes the future. And I, it broke my heart when the Lord showed me that the church is one of the, one of the gateway blockers of the earth right. to prevent yeah. the reformation oh, yeah. of humanity. Yeah. Yeah. And I was grieved to my heart when I saw it, but I couldn't unsee it. Because it yeah. says it, it makes you reinforce the government, pay your taxes, don't question history, yeah. don't yeah. talk about aliens. Yeah. <laughs> be, be good. Be a good girl. Yeah. Yeah. Under men. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How's that working out right now? How's that working out right now? When the Lord showed me this, I was grieved to the heart that I'd been a part of a system that was blocking the future because it says you can't talk, don't touch, don't go, don't go to heaven, don't talk to angels, don't find out about the cosmos. Do you see what I'm saying? There's a major problem here. You can tell there's a problem by what the conversation's about. Because the conversation is like rebooting the matrix, rebooting the matrix. Let's play the politics game. Let's go around the politics uh, wheel one more time. <laughs> no, this is good. This is good. Because we, we, we're getting free from it. We're getting free. We're getting free from a system, an ideology that Jesus never instituted. Because he said, I'll build my ecclesia, which is his legislative governmental assembly. It's the word ekkleo. Ek means called out of this realm. Yeah. Kaleo means to have a voice and a sound. Yeah. He said, I will build those who are called out of this realm to have a voice and a sound. Ekleo. He never built this system that we've got right now. Are you guys with me? Yeah. He never is not built in a meeting, he's building a new cosmos. It says a new creation is what he's building, where he says you won't need to go to the temple or the mountain, but you will all worship me in spirit and in truth. That's the good news he said. She said the woman at the well, the woman at the well is the now thing. She's the most outside person, but she's the first person yes, she will tell who he really is to. She's the one who gets the bliss, Bob, that he's Messiah. He tells the outsider who's in a fifth relationship, not even married now, and, he's, and she says, but they say we have to go to the mountain or the temple to worship. He says, a day is coming. Will you all worship me in spirit, in truth, not the temple, the mountain, 24 seven, and out of your belly will flow rivers of living water, and whoever drinks from it will never Yeah. As a Jew. Yeah. And he's given her the bliss bomb that was going to bring immortality. Yeah. Yeah. Because the gospel is I give you dignity. I give you dignity. I give you dignity. I give you dignity. 
I give you dignity. I give you dignity. It's an invasion of reckless love. It's an invasion of a passionate love. It's a fiery flame that cannot be contained until it has everything that it wants. Oh, you guys okay? Yeah. Can I go a bit longer? Yeah. So listen, I'm just going to say something. There is mixture in the new age. I've been around it, but I do want to say something, right? So I honour them, but they were willing to administrate something that we neglected. Yeah. They saw that it was a new age. They believed in something bigger was coming upon yes. the earth and a brighter future. Yes. Built on love and oneness from source. And yes, there's demonic stuff in there, but how many churches have you been to that are looking healthy right now? Your mum agrees. <laughs> Nicholas's mum is agreeing with everything. So that we're endorsed, we're endorsed by good. Eldership, eldership understands. Is this going okay? No, yeah. <laughs> this is good. This is good. Okay. So when I try and keynote, so I'm going to sit, release something. We're going to do something in a second. How much time have I got left? 15 minutes left. 15 minutes left already. 15 minutes. Okay. So I drank the wine and I was shown Isaiah's scroll was open and I saw all these faces glowing and shimmering with joy as they looked at Isaiah's book and all these truths were flying out of Isaiah's book. And Enoch said, all of heaven's conspiring to fulfill the book of Isaiah. And inside Isaiah it says, you will be fresh and flourishing in old age. You will be fresh and flourishing in old age. You I didn't know what that was for something. I was worried. 
I got a little bit worried. There's a pumpkin pie hat. That's good. I wasn't sure what that was. It's going well. You don't know until. Oh. Oh. It's too late! It's too late! It's too late for you! It's too late for them! It's too late! The empire's over! There's no putting this back in! There's no limit in it! There's no control in it! It's gonna break out everywhere! Technology! And you will be called Oaks of Righteousness. Oaks of Righteousness. Oaks! <laughs> Trees planted by the Lord to reveal His splendor. And you will rebuild the perpetual ruins. You will restore the places that were desolate. You will re-establish the ruined cities. You will heal the de desolation of generations. Even the timeline, even genetics. We're going to start to understand like no generation has before the ancient technologies. This is another lie that we're the most advanced. They can try and bury it, but you can't keep it hidden forever. This technology is to create life in a whole city. This technology is to harness the quantum foam energy of the universe already on it. We haven't needed petrol for a long time, gasoline. I was really good when I was shown that. I was like, we've lived the biggest life. That's a huge thing, isn't it? Yeah. We haven't needed oil. That's right. Yeah. That's right. The technology existed a long time ago. That's right. You guys have gone quiet. Come <laughs> on! Yeah. This is the absolute truth. Look it up online. You can see they had an electric car back in the beginning. That's right. Electric car technology is not new. But electric car technology is still the system. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, I'm landing it now. So when I came out of this realm and I saw all these things, I saw God's thoughts coming out of heaven from this book of Isaiah. I saw people grabbing them and they were many of them weren't Christians. And I and I said, Lord, how can this be? How can they be the ecclesia called out to have a name? How can they be landing the dreams of your heart? And the father turned to me and said, in the spirit, he said, this is the King Cyrus anointing. He said, King Cyrus was a pagan, but I, I, he, I called him my anointed one. And I said, no bars would be able to shut against him. And he would have the break anointing, and he would rebuild the temple. And King Cyrus was a pagan king who funded the rebuilding of the temple. He gave the military, the wood, the resources. So who was the Ecclesia? Jesus. He's not in church. You guys have gone quiet again. Do you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Now, I don't look at anyone. This is what Paul, but, oh, wow, Paul got this. He said, I can no longer look at anyone in a mere human fashion. We've not understood the power that's in every one of us. But the treasures in the field. The treasures in the field of every human heart. And these people were synchronizing with heaven. Why? Because I'll pour out my spirit like water, which is a frequency. Don't mention frequency. It's on the <laughs> I mean to pass this thing, there's going to be a bucket of water coming out. I'm going to pour water on all flesh. No, he's pouring out a frequency. But what's the fruit of the frequency? Love, peace, and Visions and dreams. Yes. An awakening of the dream, an awakening of consciousness, 
an awakening of who we are in, in him to dream and create a better world, to create a new earth, a new realm. That's what God is releasing upon the earth. And as I came out of this encounter and I was filled with this wine of Isaiah and I just met Enoch and my head was spinning with all these thoughts. As I was coming out of the realm, and I was coming back into the airplane, I heard this word, these words being spoken. Architects, yes. landscapers, yes. designers, yes. artists, all these words were coming and I was coming out of it. And I saw it. I saw what you were talking about today. I saw what you talked about, that there's going to be an age of such abundance where we'll have limitless energy. And with limitless energy, we'll be able to recycle anything. Everything will be recyclable. It just takes energy to change the matter. We will, all the nations will be equal because no nation will be hoarding the energy. It will be universal. It will be freely available. That Africa will be as wealthy as America. And I saw there'll be, because of this, there'll be a new economy, which wouldn't be GDP. It'll be the joy economy because there'll be such abundance that the whole economic system would not be based on money because money would not be meaningless when you can produce anything instantly without energy, Woo! without cost, Woo! and you can recycle anything, you can materialize anything. What value does money have in a world like that? So what is the new economy of the future? It's joy, where we're gonna compete for joy, and, and they show me it would be like a destiny-based economy, and the whole education system, the whole governmental system would compete with each other for joy to see if we can bring John 10.10, 10, which is life in abundance until it overflows. That you are, now the education system isn't informational, it's co-creational. Yeah! It's co-creational. That from a young age, the people who overshadow you, the elders and family who love you and hold you in your heart, they're already seeing the dance and the song and the sound of creation. They're into ascending. They're seeing who you are. What is the spark of life that you can take? And your whole education system is built around this joy where you're loving the thing you're doing and you're feeling fully alive. And where all these changes are going to start to happen in our bodies, where our genetics are going to change so fundamentally, we will only need to eat 10% of what we eat now. <laughs> Our hair will shimmer. Our lifespans will go up and up. I couldn't keep track of it. It went up and then it went And I've seen people living tens of thousands of years. And people's bodies will be so affected that the organs are going to get activated and do things we didn't even know they could do. And people's lungs would change. I was taken into lungs. Lungs will be different. I have a theory we're going to be able to breathe underwater. Yeah. yeah. And there's a good reason for this, it's a biological reason. And someone contacted me when I posted this, said it's possible it's a small change in the system. Because how would Adam and Eve have governed the seas? Yeah. Yeah. They couldn't die, remember, so they couldn't drown. And I saw these changes come on, so I saw this, this glorification. And I saw that we could see colors that we can't see. We could see auras. We could see the electromagnetic field from plants. And when I came out of this ecstasy, it was so strong that when I went home, I could see the forest glowing outside my house. Wow. So I went to sleep. I could see this fluorescence, bioluminescence coming off the plants. We're going to be able to interact with nature and see colors. We're going to be able to see the moon's real color. Do you know if you could really see the moon's colour? It's made up of loads of colours. It's made up of all the ore that's crashed on it. It's not white. It's multicoloured. But we're not seeing the spectrum and the frequency. But we'll be able to see the multicoloured moon. We'll be able to talk heart to heart. I saw children at the age of 10 could all speak like several languages fluently. And they were bouncing between languages. They learnt it all in school. I saw adults communing together telepathically. And they were talking about things I couldn't understand, multi-dimensional dynamics and cosmology. And they were like all interfacing in oneness. Wow. Yeah. Hey! Hey! Yeah. Hey! Yeah. hey. Yeah. So we're going to repair the desolation of generations. I know I've hit you with it a lot. Wow. All athletics will be broken, all records. 
creativity will go through the roof. Yes. I saw there wasn't a single thing that wasn't done with joy. Amen. I saw the side of a building, these two women, they would put these like moving wheels of bronze shimmering with these coloured like almost plexiglass something things with moving things so that the side of the building was animated. Yeah. And all of everything was like that. And then I saw something weird. I saw that we're going to harness the power of gravity. That the secrets of gravity are going to be released and we're going to be able to govern gravity and build gravity into buildings. All right, okay, I thought that was cool. Yeah, I'm cool. And then they, I'll end with this. They, then I'll show this is a great mystery, but there'll be a new stage of human development. Okay, so you know you have like baby, infant, yeah. tweens, teens, adult, middle age, old age. I saw there will be a new stage past that mm. called glorification. <laughs> and it would be for people who walked in such eldership and love that God would glorify them. And it would, be, it would be considered a very beautiful, honorable thing for the glorification. I don't understand what that means, but it would be like a crown of glory in the later age of a person's lifespan. They will be glorified and changed, renewed and look wonderful. I'm not even sure how to describe it. It was a mystery to me. Thank you, Papa. I've run out of time, guys. But thank you for having me at this conference. I love you. And thank you.